time to render. We're going to render this two different ways. Here's the first. Switch over here. We don't need that open anymore. So I type T N to get rid of that one. And what I want to do now is look through the camera. So I'm going to do Control Alt Q, not to look through the camera, but to look from multiple views. It's a little noisy with this thing on these multiple views, but uh, let's let's uh, take a look and see what we've got here. Go ahead and under render, hit render image. There's our little pencil. Now, type shift A, add a plane, type S, oh, let's say five. Scale it up 500%, then hit enter. Click on the materials, create a new material, scroll down. And for this material, under shadows, say shadows only. So it's only going to receive shadows. Now, for this light, it casts the shadow. This light, it also casts one. I don't want two shadows. And in fact, I'm going to switch these out to spotlights. And I could use buffered shadows, so that way if I don't want to use ray tracing, I can render a little faster. So the light is now not pointing, the spotlight's not pointing at the pencil. So I'm going to move my mouse over right ortho, click R to rotate. It's kind of close, so I'll mouse wheel out, type G, R to rotate. And then look at it from these other views. I'll go right, I'll have the light right on it. Let's see, does that seem high enough? I'll bring that up. In fact, I actually would like the shadow to be more over. A, sh a shorter shadow. A shorter shadow. Shorter shadow. And then this other one, we can make this a spotlight as well if we still want this other light. No shadow. Let's make it point at the pencil. And hit F12 to render. So now that's cool. Let's uh, change the background for the world. Let's just make this nice and white for now. And then hit F12. Bring that all the way up to white. OK. Do it again, F12. And we got our pencil and our little shadow. Uh, this, uh, this light. to make sure it's on there. This one probably don't need as much energy on it, so we can make it a little bit, oh, let's say 0.5. And the camera, this is not the most interesting angle, so I'm going to select the camera, right click along that border, and then come over here. And with the camera, I'll click on this. Uh, I'm going to click on the limits, at least so I can see a little better what it's pointing at. G, bring it down, R to rotate, over here, rotate this again. Uh, our camera's rotated kind of funny, so I'm going to type R when my mouse is over the camera window, so I can just rotate it side here. And I could always go to N and see, okay, what are my angles? Well, 
Looks like it's the Y angle that we'd really want to zero out. And then uh, I'm going to type G. And then I'm going to type ZZ. So I move along the local Z axis. Then push my mouse up. Left click to OK. And type G. And then all day. Escape. I'm going to uh, scrub along the timeline here. See how it's above there. So I'm going to type G, CZ, move out a little bit, and then G, just move my mouse up. We'll just scrub again. So that's pretty cool. And now I want to check my render settings. Okay, we're rendering at 50% of the uh, of the actual whole screen size which uh, this is being filmed at uh, 1280 by 720 so it's well beyond that but let's go ahead and hit F12 and render let's make sure we're viewing the image at 100% then hit escape and it brings us back here that's good. I'm going to do Control Alt Q again to bring us back to this window. And let's see. When we render, we could render out to individual PNGs. Uh, why don't we? Let's see. How about H two sixty four? And I'm going to set my render location not to the temp folder but I'm going to set it to my desktop and I'm going to create a new directory and I'll call this output and I'll enter it and I'll say accept and so our, that's where our output will be it'll, it'll be slash slash means relative to the location of the file and into the output directory see I'm still thinking about this I mean you could if you're on Windows do AVI but I'm doing H.264 because that should work on Windows but also if you have QuickTime installed that would be good uh, here let's click QuickTime here and uh, give that a try let's go ahead and render an animation Let's click play. I'll bring that over here. Now, uh, what would be nice is if we had a little bit of a uh, motion blur. We could click sampled motion blur and maybe give it three samples and then animate.
that's cool. You've got a little bit of a motion blur. I think this is a good time to save. So that rendering was great if you were making a movie, but let's now render it out if we were going to render it for sprites. Now, uh, let's say we want to do it from the side. Since we're doing it from the side, we don't need the plane anymore, so I'll select that, delete it. And then uh, the camera, I want the camera, so select the camera, I want the camera to be looking at it from the side. I don't want to have to go through that whole moving the camera thing, I just want it to be in the position that I'm in right now. I can do that by typing Control alt 0 on the number pad. Control alt and then number pad 0. Uh, it's not orthographic, but we can click on camera and make it orthographic. And then we want it to be, let's say, 128 by 128. And we'll just do 100%. So now we've got this nice square. We're wasting a lot of space. Let's come over here and bring our orthographic scale. Change that. And it looks like we probably want to move this up a little bit. In fact, we're going to look at this from the side, not through the camera. I'm going to move the camera so it's right over the z-axis. Now, we animated this pencil jumping forward because that was an easier way to figure out the motion. But if you're animating it with a sprite, you probably uh, don't want that forward motion. So let's go ahead and get rid of it. We'll go back to our animation screen and we only change the location in this one so we'll just select these and delete those keyframes and then uh, let's just do an alt G now when we scrub you'll see it goes through the same thing except that I deleted all of the location I still wanted the height so undo 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 there we go so along the z-axis will retain but let's get rid of the change along the y and the x well apparently you'll see the gosh it looks like it's moving along the y but here it says z this is an issue with the bones. Let me detour just just ever so briefly to come into the bones. And if we were to select these the armature and say, show me the axes of these bones. Zoom in. Let's rotate around a little bit. You'll see, sure enough, the bones Z points in a different direction than the global Z. So what we want is whatever this is pointing to, we want the bones Y location, which is the global Z. This is recording the global. So let's undo, undo, undo. And this time, we'll select Z and X and delete those. Let's look at it from the side again. Scroll out. jump up in the air. That's what we want. Let's go back to the default view. Let's type N to hide that. I really just want to hide these two lights for the moment because their lines are distracting. And let's look through the camera and decide, okay, should we shrink this a little bit more? 
How big is the jump going to be? Let's go to the height of the jump. Let's see. Let's step through here. We're out of the frame there. So we should uh, make this a little bigger. Then we jump up and down. So we could uh, we could scale this down a little bit again. Move this definitely up because we never go beyond there. Move it over to the right. Make sure we've got. You know, try and maximize our space so we're not wasting space. scale a little bit more. Let's go to the worst case scenario over here, which is like right about there. And the worst case scenario over here, which is fine. And the jump. That looks good. Now, what we'll do is we'll go to rendering. And this time, we'll go back and render out PNGs with alpha and uh, click animate. Oh, I still have the motion blur on there, so I'm going to hit escape to stop. Because I don't think we want the motion blur. Let's just turn that off. Maybe uh, just for the sake of this video, let's let's make this a little bit larger so we can see it a little easier. You can make your sprites whatever size you want, but let's animate again. And there you go. If we were to open these in Photoshop. one of the images and you can see that it has an alpha I'll prove that to you in a second and now I proved that it does not have an alpha so let's just close that go back to blender and the reason it doesn't have an alpha is because when I rendered this transparent under shading. So let's do another quick animate these. There we go. Let's open. Yay! I don't have to prove it now and you can see it. So that's pretty cool. Now you could use that in programmatically bring that in make a sprite sheet have fun with it